Welcome to HDFC Securities 5-Minute Market Wrap-Up, your weekly guide to all the key events in the equity markets. In key macroeconomic news, the central government has lowered the fiscal deficit target for FY24-25 to 5.1% of the GDP in the interim budget. This was lower than street expectations of 5.3% fiscal deficit. The 10-year GSEC bond yields declined by about 8 basis points after the budget was presented. The U.S. Federal Reserve's FOMC committee decided to keep its key interest rates unchanged. U.S. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell also indicated that the U.S. Fed Reserve is unlikely to cut rates at its meeting in March this year. Three American soldiers were killed in a drone attack by Iran-backed Houthi rebels on a U.S. base in Jordan. In response, the U.S. conducted airstrikes against more than 85 targets in Syria and Iraq. This escalation of the conflict in the Middle East could have an impact on crude oil prices, and this is a geopolitical risk that needs to be monitored closely. U.S. employers added jobs in January, beating the street expectations of 180,000 jobs. This was the largest monthly gain in the past 12 months. In markets last week, Nifty rallied by 2.35%, driven mainly by PSUs like BPCL, PowerGrid, NTPC, and Coal India. The broader markets also performed well, with the mid-cap index up 3.1% and the small-cap index up 3.3%. Among key sectoral gainers, Nifty PSU Bank rose 11.5%, while the BSE Oil & Gas rose by 9.5%. In sectoral losers, S&P Basie Telecom was down 1.8%. In select market movers during the week, IRB infrastructure developers rose by 32% after its PAT grew by 32% year-on-year. IRB infrastructure also won a significant arbitration case against the NHAI. Wellspun Living Shares rallied by 14% after its net profit grew by 317% year-on-year to rupees 177 crores. Shares of 197 Communications, the parent of ATM, were logged on 20% lower circuits on both Thursday as well as Friday. This was mainly because of strict restrictions imposed by the RBI on operations of ATM, Payments Bank, the Wallet and the NPCI. Shares of AU Small Finance Bank declined by 11% after the company reported a 4.5% year-on-year decline in profit, mainly because of higher provisions. FII activity was mixed. They net sold rupees 2,000 crores of equities in cash. For the whole of January, FIIs had been net sellers to the tune of about 35,000 crore rupees. DIIs continued to be strong net buyers. For the whole of January, DIIs were net buyers to the tune of rupees 27,000 crores. U.S. markets were also lifted by strong results from tech companies like Meta. The Nasdaq Composite ended the week 1.1% higher. In this section, we discuss select reports published by the research teams of HDFC Securities. You can access these reports at the links shown. Our team has downgraded SBI cards and payment services from a buy to an ad and reduce the price target from Rs 955 per share to Rs 775 per share. This was mainly because of weak results impacted by higher than anticipated provisioning. Bajaj Finance quarterly results were mixed with robust AUM growth partly offset by elevated credit costs. Bajaj Finance has updated its long-range strategy and is now targeting a 20-25% to 25% earnings CAGR over FY24 to FY28. We retain a buy rating with a target price of Rs. 8,690 per share. LNT reported strong order booking, but its EBITDA and adjusted PAT were below our estimates. We retain a buy rating. Maruti Suzuki results surpass our estimates, led by a better than expected margin. We have increased our target price by about 8% and maintain a buy rating. Our retail research team has come up with an update note to increase our base case fair value to Rs. 1,022 per share. That is all for this week. Please refer to the detailed disclaimer on the screen. Please note that the information discussed in this video was for educational and information purposes only. Thank you.